Kenya, thank you so much for taking time today to speak to me for Comedy Hype Plus. My name is Tina Sampe. I am a journalist from LA, also known as Slauson Girl. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we know that you know your name has been in the headlines um, recently due to, due to your divorce yeah. from Mr. Owens, Mr. Yeah. Gary Owens. I wanted to talk to you though, how have you been able to find a sense of peace and balance after going through such a life-changing experience such as divorce? So I think for me, um, I believe in God. I really have a faith, like I'm not in church every Sunday or even every other Sunday, but I truly believe that um, I'm, I'm gonna be okay. Like, I, I believe that. And um, I think things that are supposed to happen do happen may not be the way you had wanted them to happen, but I think what is supposed to happen does happen. So, um, I mean, in getting a divorce, I mean, yeah, it, it changes things, but mm -hmm. I'm still who I am. Right. You know what I mean? Like, yes. you know, Tina Turner was fighting for her name. You know, only thing I had to fight for was some money, but <laughs> so I'm still who I am, mm -hmm. which is a hustler, resourceful, smart, you know what I mean? So, yeah, you okay. know, I am rebuilding though, but yeah. Okay. okay, so let's talk a little bit about the fact that you grew up in Oakland, California. Yes. And I just love Oakland. So what were some of the things, you know, we think back to your childhood, what were some of the things that you enjoyed doing and who would you say had the most influence on shaping your perspectives as a young girl? So I think, okay, so I started off in the Acorn, if you know anything about Oakland, that was kind of like our good times. Like, you know, if you, oh, like current references, do you even know what good times is? Of okay, yeah, yeah. so that was, uh, so at that time, it was really the community raising you or helping to raise you or look after you. So if you were out doing something you shouldn't have been, yeah, they're gonna tell your mother, but that's probably after somebody already didn't spanked you told you off or whatever, and then drug you home. So, um, and even in that situation, um, I've been fortunate that all, all of my life, I can really say, I've been surrounded by women that love their children, very dedicated. A lot of them were single, but were hard workers. Like, so that's what I saw. Mm -hmm. I think that they were loyal somehow, sometimes to detriment, but very loyal um, and, and very loving. Mm -hmm. So those were my experiences from my aunts, my play aunts, my cousins. And, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have a, I didn't know I was poor. I didn't, I didn't know that. And every all the women around me, whether or not they were married or not married, they all was happy living life. So that's probably what I learned, you know, from them. So did growing up and seeing, you know, these strong women, you know, that um, were family oriented, yeah. but, you know, like you said, some of them were single raising, you know, right. children by themselves or handling the family by themselves. Did that have any kind of impact on you in terms of like how you saw or envision your future and you know in terms of having a family and things like that I would say that the loyalty that they had maybe to people that didn't deserve their loyalty whether or not they ended up incarcerated or they had a million other families or just maybe weren't very nice to them do you know what I mean like and I'm not saying those were all my experience but what I did see is women still loving and being supportive and trying to help people that probably did not really deserve their help and loyalty or love and protection. So I think, yeah, you do grow up with that. So, um, you know, and, I, and, and it has played out. I think it did play out a little bit in my situation. You know what I mean? But um, like I said, at the end of the day, I think shit happens you know, and life is about learning and experiences. And I think everything that did happen was supposed to happen because if it didn't happen to me, who was it gonna happen to? My daughter? Mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't want to, you know what I mean? She didn't, 
I don't think suburban kids are equipped to deal with a lot of stuff. <laughs> so I definitely wouldn't want it to be her or even one of my, my nieces or other cousins. So, um, so it's okay, you know. Okay. So, you know, what was interesting um, is that I wanted to ask you about, you know, I feel like in society, a lot of times they expect black women to be like so strong mm -hmm. and they, you know, we're expected to endure so much. And a lot of times with not the same level of support that a lot of other women are mm -hmm. afforded. And um, I just wanted to ask you, how do you feel when people reference you as like, you know, a strong black woman? Like, is mm -hmm. that something that you take pride in? Um, or do you feel that that's something that, you know, they expect us to just endure so much? I think people expect mothers to be strong because you got kids, so I think you pull for, from something different. I don't take it as an insult because being strong is a part of me. You know, there are other parts of me also, but being strong is a part of me. So I don't really take it. Um, I don't I don't take it as a as an insult for sure. But just because you can be strong doesn't mean you always want to be the one that's strong. Just because you can cook doesn't mean you always want to be the one cooking. You know what I mean? And just because you can make money doesn't mean you are the you always want to be the only one making money. Right. So I think women are so much more complex mm -hmm. than just the one thing. Yeah. Yeah. And black women, you know, yeah. again, and black women, you know, I, again, I just feel like there's, you know, they, but we had to be strong. You know what I mean? Like, just if you really think about it, like, I don't know if this was during my time when I was little, but you know, there was a time where you, you, the father couldn't even be in the house with the right. woman and the children. So, I mean, women and especially black women had to be resourceful. Like we got to still keep the family going. Right. I still got to raise you guys and be supportive and, you know, be encouraging. Mm -hmm. So I think it just all becomes what we, what we've seen, mm -hmm. you know, and experienced. So I don't even think, I think people just started talking about, you know, the whole strength thing, but I think it just became like our name, like we, it's just what we do. Had to do. Yeah. For it. Okay. So how did, you know, a young woman from Oakland find herself in Los Angeles on the social scene? Um, so I, my, okay, so I have an older son when his father and I broke up, um, I was in my room for two weeks, like crying. Cause this was like my, the first guy I'd ever dated. First guy I had sex with. It was like my first everything, you know, and, and I got this kid. So when we broke up, um, and then fine, I was, I was crying or whatever. Um, I was acting out a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to just act like, you know, there were some incidences, but I'm older and I've learned. Okay. So my cousin came to my room one day and she was like, what what's going on you, you know you got you, you need to get up you got to do something so i mean literally from a movie opened up the curtains whatever she said we're going to santa barbara i said santa barbara from oakland i don't know it's like five hours or whatever i said what am i doing santa barbara she said santa barbara's beautiful you're gonna love santa barbara i was like i don't know nobody in santa barbara we literally went to santa barbara over the weekend I got an apartment, I registered for school, and this is all God, God's timing because it was like, I guess, towards the end of summer, mm -hmm. registered for school, found a school for my oldest son, and within a week and a half, I had moved to Santa Barbara. Okay, so, so what had influenced your decision to make that jump so quick by just visiting that one time? Okay, well, after we did break up, like I said, there was a few, in, there was an incident or two, I went out on a date with this guy, <laughs> And my ex, um, we were pulling out, he was pulling in, my ex before Gary, um, he was pulling into the driveway and he saw me like within this guy's car. So he started chasing us around East Oakland. Oh no. Yeah. And so the guy is like, put your seat back, put your seat back. And I'm like, <laughs> what? You know what I mean? I, you know, yeah, I'm on 98th and MacArthur, but I'm home before the street lights. Like what? Right. So he's like, put your seat back. So yeah. I put my seat back. And this was my first time ever going out with him. Mm -hmm. But he was like, all right, now reach back and get my gun. I was like, gun, oh <laughs> you know, I mean, it was, it was a lot, it was a lot going on. Uh -huh. And then, so, so my first baby daddy is chasing us through um, East Oakland. And I'm like, oh my God, don't shoot him, don't <laughs> shoot him. He's a regular guy, he's a nerd, oh my God. And I'm like, literally like crying, crying. And then somehow he um, lost him. 
And when I went back home, he dropped me off. He walked me to my door. But when he went back to his car, my ex jumped out of the, the bushes. <laughs> oh my gosh. So I was like, this cannot be the rest of my life. Okay. okay. So right, right. it was not going to work. So right. I had to go somewhere. And that was good for me because I went from Santa Barbara to um, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it was no complaints. I mean, things happen for me the way that they are supposed to. Mm -hmm. okay. So. And so you're, this is like during the late 1990s you were yes. in LA? Yes, yeah. Okay. And so what are like some of the places that you started to frequent once you came to LA? Uh, comedy of... store, I was never really a club girl. Okay. Um, a guy that I was on a date with, I, I, I'm dating some weirdos. Okay, so <laughs> a guy I did go out on a date with took me, but it wasn't a frequent. Um, he took me to Peanuts, but at the time he didn't tell me it was like a lesbian bar okay. or a club or whatever you call it. And so we walk in he, and he said, before he took me in there, he said, I'm going to be like the wise man bringing gifts, right? It just kind of went over my head, like whatever, we're going to a bar, we're going to hang out. Mm -hmm. The music was good. And I was like, hmm. when I walked in, it just was strange. You know what I mean? Because I had never seen like lesbians, like, like being lesbians mm -hmm. or whatever, kissing or making out. And I was like... Huh. And it was just like you see one couple. Oh, that's an that's an oddity. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you start to look around like, wait a minute. You know what I mean? Wait. So you're on a date, and see, you guy, don't get it either. Yeah. This guy brings yeah. you there. Yeah. He took okay. me to okay. a lesbian club, and he knew everybody. So at this point, I'm <laughs> like, well, are you a want to be lesbian? Are you gay? Like, what, what's what was going on? Right. And then this one lesbian who, like, when you looked at her. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sure there are a lot of there there are a lot of beautiful lesbians, okay? Mm -hmm. I am just saying my first experience like really being around, she was so like pretty. But, okay. I mean, she was no, she was like pretty pretty. Like, okay. are you supposed to be here? You know what I mean? Like, are we supposed to be because we ain't supposed to be here. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? And she came up and she whispered, I'm having um a slumber party for <laughs> girls only and he can't come. And I was and she was like, You wanna come? <laughs> I am so stupid. I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't go, but uh -huh. I, she caught me off guard. And mm -hmm. I was just like, ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, but, and then I looked, and then later I was like, why, why did you take me there? He said, I just wanted to see how you would react. And I was like, well, why you know so many people? You know what I mean? Why mm -hmm. you know so many people? Right. And it was an A-list celebrity there the night I was there mm -hmm. in the bathroom, like totally making out with this girl. So. I did stop to watch just for a second just and only because it was an A-lister. Just for a second. Are they still A-lister or just oh, yeah. back then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So basically, did you ever go back to that bar? No. I'm good. Oh, you good. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Is it still around? Um, no, you still? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll move on. Let's talk a little bit about parents. Okay. And your father. Yes. Um, I was watching some clips from your show. You and yes. Gary had your own show yes. about, you know, your family. Yes. Um, this is air into like 2016. 16, 17, something 17. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so one of the clips that I had watched. Um, oh boy. Was your dad a former Black Panther? Okay. So that was what I was told. He and Huey Newton were really, really good friends. Mm. Like really good friends. Um, but my... Oh my gosh, I never said this all out. Okay, so actually he was not, but my father was in a club and he was um, murdered by a guy and Huey Newton found out who it was who had murdered my father and um, that guy was never seen again. So. Hmm. so he was not technically a Black Panther. I think like he was not a Black Panther. He mm -hmm. was just very close Affiliate. and used to volunteer and stuff mm -hmm. um, with them. Okay. Well, yeah. my condolences um, oh, to your you. dad. Six years old. Huh? Oh, you were six. Yeah. And so did you have a relationship with your dad at all? Oh, yeah. Like, so it's, it's so weird because I remember, like, things about my father, like, three years old, four years old, like, where people who have their fathers the whole, their whole lifetime, like, may not remember things at that young of an age mm -hmm. but that's all I had so mm -hmm. what I remember he was very um, loving to me he used to write me very beautiful letters oh, wow. and I can't give you an example but I know 
I always felt protected. So those are my daddy issues that I bring. You know, it's not like I was never promiscuous, mm -hmm. but feeling protective, protected, and cared for mm -hmm. is like really like a deal breaker. So if I'm not feeling that, it probably ain't going nowhere. You know what I mean? Like. Just like a guy would do with his daughter. Hey, did you make it to the store? Hey, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't need to be called all day, but mm -hmm. you need to check on me. Right. Or it's over. No, I, I yeah. Comfort definitely is, you know, yeah. where I'm at with it too. And so, yeah, I definitely, I wanted to men ask you, you know, how um, the relationship with your father showed up in the different men that you dated, but, you know, you kind of. Yeah. So I always date security. men that. I feel protected that, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And I don't know, like, if I'm expecting some shit to go down, but <laughs> you know what I mean? But I always date that. I date men that I think are or will make good fathers. Mm. Um, they, all the men I've dated all have a good sense of humor. Like, they may not be, like, mm -hmm. on stage, mm -hmm. but we could talk about each other and laugh and, mm -hmm. you know, like, that kind of thing. Um, okay. I've never, only person, I've never dated anyone that can cook. I do not attract guys that can cook. Okay? <laughs> they expect... And good thing I'm a good cook. No. <laughs> so, but I've never walked into a house or a kitchen and smelled dinner. I know that. Mm -hmm. So They probably was expecting the women to have it all taken Maybe, care of. Maybe, but you know? I don't know. I see people dating chefs. I'm like, ain't mm -hmm. no chefs ever flew in my DMs. Not yet. You feel me? You keep yeah. posting those selfies. Well, though. okay, then if that's the case, I also like firemen. And for some <laughs> strange reason, I'm very attracted to UPS drivers. Don't even ask. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> would you date a bus driver? Um, I would. But let me tell you, I, if he's funny, I don't need him to take care of me. I need him to be able to take care of him. You know what I mean? If he is a bus driver that can make me feel protected, and if he can cook, <laughs> and, you know sexually i think it would be good mm -hmm. then yeah okay but that's not who i'm dating right now okay, okay. but yes <laughs> okay okay interesting because you know there was like all that controversy going on with ebony k williams yeah had said that she wouldn't date a yeah. bus driver because she want the bus owner right you know um which she said she was speaking to just you know aspirations that black people yes men should have and yes. so i like that response that was i like that um Okay, so I know we didn't want to, you know, center our whole interview around Gary, but I do want to ask you a few questions. Okay, you can ask me, listen, you can ask me whatever you want to ask me. If I don't want to answer, I'm going to tell you, I'm not answering it. Okay. Okay. So, well, let's start here then. Okay. Um, now that, you know, you probably had some time mm -hmm. to, you know, reflect and things have settled down a bit. Um, do you feel a sense of responsibility or any guilt around your divorce in terms of what may have led Gary to filing? No. This is what I think. I think people move in the direction that they want to move in. I think um, a person's cheating has nothing, like his cheating or whatever he was out there doing, they don't have nothing to do with me. That's on him, right? So I never felt responsible. Like someone could say, maybe you should have left earlier. You know, someone could say that. Um, and yeah, or the financial situation I found myself in, I feel responsible about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because I didn't put money away and I never thought it would be a money issue. I never thought I'd be fighting over money. So someone could say that. But in terms of how he moved or any guy, you know what I mean? No, I think people do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. And I also think that, you know, I don't have to be mad or bitter or really even angry. I, and I was never angry about that part of it. Um, I, don't, I don't have to worry about that because I know I'm going to be good. I know in terms of men and dating, I don't have a problem. So I was never worried like, oh my God, you know, like people say they're going to be by themselves forever. That was never my worry. You know what I mean? Ever. So I'm not worried about that. I was just more concerned with, um, because I did, I was not smart enough to make sure should something ever happen, mm -hmm. I would be okay. You know, that I had to rebuild or kind of figure it out that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So 
that's those are the type of things I would feel bad or guilty, but not the reason why we got divorced or mm -hmm. do I regret anything? No, not really. Okay. You know, but maybe I will in a couple of years. Right now, I don't regret shit, just to be honest. No. Okay. So you had mentioned, you know, that when you, um, you like to seek guys that make you feel, you Hold know. Hold up. I'm not good at seeking. I'm not good at texting. So they gotta, they, they gotta get to me somehow, some way through a DM, through Facebook, through a friend. Um, so, but I like what I like okay. and I like them chocolate. Okay. I feel you. Yeah. Okay. You like them chocolate. I, I know girl. Let me just say, I don't even fool with the breast no more. I used to only eat the chicken breast. I don't even fool with that no more. I'm straight dark meat. Oh, Period. you sound like, um, JD Mai from, Who? um, is that what she said? She said, Basically, she only dates um, dark meat on a side, and then she went and married Young Jeezy. But whatever, that was uh, kind of like reverse. Oh yeah, that's funny no. though. I do. I like. I, I like them chocolate. Is there a difference in terms of sexual? Um, okay, let me. I'm gonna say two things that are true about Gary. He's packing. Uh oh. Yeah, they gonna okay. be knocking. Who cares? I ain't my problem no more. Let him. Okay, so he uh -oh. is packing, and. <laughs> um, I want him to be happy and he is really, really funny. Yeah. Even yeah. after me, he will probably still be funny. Mm -hmm. So those are two things that are real. So um, I didn't, I've never had a, you know, in terms of a white guy, it, it was, that wasn't a disappointment. Was I he your so. first white guy? Well, I lived in Santa Barbara, okay? Oh yeah. So, so. no, I've had other white guys, but, but wow. my number is still in single digits. Okay. <laughs> So, um, but my mother was always like, please try to meet a black guy. Please try to meet a black guy. It was just no black guys were coming up to me. And I'm not good at approaching mm. like that. Yeah. I always thought that a guy Are you good at approaching? To, I mean, these days I would definitely, see, I'm, I could talk to anybody, you know, so I'm, I haven't like, and the world is yours because we, both men and women is whatever you see. You're funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love it. <laughs> I'm actually in a loving, long distance relationship. He's older though. Oh, how much older? Hmm, 10. Oh, oh okay. 15? Uh, 10 or 15? That hmm. means 20. You're lying. <clears throat> okay, forget it. Go ahead. <laughs> um, kind of like those security and comfort yeah, things, I get it. you know what I'm Trust saying? Trust me, I get and it. And old school guys, like, I don't know. I feel like with my generation, we're doing a little bit too much politicking over like relationship roles. Yes. So I agree with that. Would school. you sign a prenup? Um, I'm not saying he has anything or doesn't have anything. But I wouldn't want to. Oh, OK. But Can I, I tell you something about prenups? This yes, is my please. thing about it. Seriously. I don't think women should get caught up on prenups for real. Like I would sign a prenup. OK, because I don't think it has, I don't think a prenup has anything to do with if a person trusts you at all. I think if somebody is, um, and I've said this on my podcast before, I think if someone is leaving you in their house alone, their office, talking to their business partners mm -hmm. in front of you, talking about their money in front of you, leaving that credit card around or their wallet out, I think that says more about how much a person mm -hmm. values you. Right. And, and trust you. Right. Um, you know, sometimes people got people. Do you know what I mean? So meaning where they are financially, mm -hmm. they may have a team of people trying to watch out. So, I mean, yeah, you okay. may want to make sure you're going to be OK. Right. Afterwards. But I just don't think I think sign a fucking prenup. OK, but what about, you know, if there's a divorce and in terms of if the woman doesn't have much financially, yeah. she's not really entitled to anything. So well, how does that work? a prenup, you know, at that point, he's liking you if he want to marry you, right? Mm -hmm. So he, at that point, you should be able to get, well, will you buy me a condo or will you get give me a million dollars or will you, you okay. know what I mean? Take, You know what I mean? You should be able to get something maybe not to take care of you for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. but you know, to, for you to move out or to get on your feet for six months. Okay. Depending on. And so is that like in the prenup terms at the bottom or is that like a verbal thing? Cause no, you would, you would say this, baby, I, I signed a prenup, I don't care, but mm -hmm. like what, what's gonna happen? You know what I mean? You know my financial situation, like do you think we can, 
and men like to be ass shit. So you gotta, you know, like, hey, do you think maybe we can put something in it? Like you would pay my rent they for like to be six asked months. That? I think they do because they like to feel not like you telling them what to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. 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 It's more like, hey, this is going on. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't mind signing your prenup. That's fine. Okay. But do you think you can help me? Like, if it doesn't work out, and I know it's going to work out. That's okay. why I'm willing to sign this. But if it doesn't work out, can you, you know, help me with rent or, mm-hmm. you know, help me start a business? What, Whatever that is. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I know if you came into the relationship with $13, I don't think you should expect to leave with $30 million. Right. Okay, unless you built it with him. With them, right. Yeah. Right. I, now, yeah. if y'all both got nothing, then who cares? <laughs> Forget the prenup. Okay. So, you know, when you told your mom that yeah. you and Gary were going to get married, yeah. and you know, you guys are having, you know, you were pregnant by yeah. him, um, and she probably realized that that's kind of the end of seeking the hope. A, uh-huh. a hope for the black man. How did she kind of, um, you know, respond to that? Well... She, Gary and I were together for five, five years before I even got pregnant, mm-hmm. four or five years. So I ain't never had to get pregnant to keep no dude, ever, okay? So she already had experienced him and I had a son and he was very, very good to my son, mm-hmm. which was her only concern at that point. She knew I would figure it out and all that kind of stuff. So she was, she was fine. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when I got pregnant, it was just like, dear God, I hope you don't have a girl. That was it, and I didn't, so she was happy. <laughs> she's a boy, she's a boy, she likes, well, she likes Kennedy too, I shouldn't say that. Mm-hmm. At one point she was, she loves boys. Okay. Little boys. So, you know, you guys are divorced and things like that, but you know, you would say that Gary was a good, you know, father and parent and things like that. I to think you? we do the best with the tools we have. Mm. You know, I think mm-hmm. there was ways that he could have been a better father. There are probably ways that my kids will say I could have been a better mother. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Um, um, I should have made them eat more vegetables. You know, mm-hmm. like if I had to go back and do it again, mm-hmm. they, they would be eating more vegetables. So I don't know. I think there's always room for growth. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we do the best we can. Um, I think he may look back and say there are some things he wishes he he could take back or do differently Mm -hmm. in terms of being a father, the divorce. I think all of it. I think it's, like I said, I think it's just a lesson. Like life Mm -hmm. is a lesson. You know what I mean? So. Okay. So you mentioned before that, you know, you have worked behind the scenes before to help Gary in his career. Yeah. And, you know. Yes. And a lot of people may not have realized that or know about that. Um, can you touch at all about some of the ways that you were able to, you know, help Gary in terms of like maybe booking some shows and things like that? Yeah. Um, I think the people who need to know do know. Okay. Um, and the people who are around, they know. Okay. I think, so Gary is very smart. Like he honestly is one of the smartest people. Um, when it, especially when it comes to the business of comedy, mm-hmm. he is one of the smartest people I have met. Like he gets the business. So I was working and um, he had a manager at the time, but it just wasn't maybe the best situation. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think I was like, I can manage you. You know, you can teach me. Um, I didn't have a problem talking to people. I didn't have a problem. I was already negotiating deals, different types of deals, but I didn't have a problem with any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, My only thing I said to him is, if I do it, you tell me the price you want. And if they say no, I'm not going back because I ain't begging for, I ain't begging for nothing. So he taught me like, okay, so um, this is what you're going to do when you call, you know what I mean? How you call a club and mm-hmm. say, Hey, Gary, whatever is interested in doing a club and how to start to negotiate. And then he had like previous contracts that I looked at. So I created a writer for him. So that part was easy. And the first person that turned me down was Gary Abdul from the comedy store in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, we want this amount. He was like, I think we were off like 500. First, we were off 1,000, but we got to 500. Mm-hmm. And he said, no, nah, I'm not going to pay that. And I said, okay, well, he's not going to do the room. And that was it. And then but when I hung up, I was like, fuck, 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 right? Because mm-hmm. I didn't get the deal. And, um, and then he called me back 
maybe a couple of months later, two, three months later, and he gave me the number I wanted. Mm. So at that point, I was like, okay. I mean, I was getting him other shows before then, and he would tell me what clubs to call. Mm. Um, so like I said, he knows the business, so he taught me that part of it. So I managed him and negotiated for a long time. Um, in terms of his comedy specials, he couldn't, we just couldn't find anyone to invest in the special. But we knew we could make money off of the special and a show. So we wanted to take it to a much bigger venue. Um, and our first one was in, um, our first one that we did was 1,400, 1400 seats at 4th and B in San Diego. And then we moved to the theater there, I think it was 25, 2,700 seats. But by this time, I knew how to plan and what it took to put on a successful comedy show. So I could do that. Um, we had the money to do the shows so we could do that. And my thought always, if you ain't gonna invest in yourself, then we can't really expect other people, you know, um, to do it. So I knew the areas I was green at. I didn't know how to work a camera. I didn't know anything about sound. So I got the first show, I got Mike Behoos from BET who had worked on Comic View. So I surrounded myself with people. I was the greenest one on a set. And that's just, that is what I've always said. I'm gonna be the greenest one. I'm gonna surround myself with people who know this stuff so I can learn it. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, we did like four specials, you know, and those specials led to other things like the Shack Tour. The, you know, and other things. And in terms of booking, at some point he outgrew me too. I didn't know TV. At this point he's ready for TV. I didn't, I couldn't even figure out how to break into TV as a TV agent. And so we started looking for agents. You know, I don't know. I did probably with any, well, I don't think everybody can do it, but I did what any girlfriend may try to do. I was just really successful at it. Mm. Okay. But I also think when you are making so much money for so long, now keep in mind, Gary and I were together 24, 25 years. So you you start to make so much money. And when you struggled, the struggle, the hustle, um, you forget what that was like. Mm -hmm. You know, because you're so used to just having money. And, and you were money. with Gary when he was barely starting out. Well, he, he, didn't have, he didn't have nothing. Right. Yeah, I was on an air Zero. mattress. Zero. Air mattress. Smack. S10. Mm. Yeah. So that you crack window shield down, no health insurance. Okay. He came to live with me. All right. So, but I saw his potential. Mm. Um, like how can we just touch on that? Like, what did that look like in a potential? young Gary Owens? Like, you know, um, he was always funny okay. he, and he, he was always on time. Oh, he was always, um, he was a hustler in terms of the comedy. Mm -hmm. Like he was going to make it. Hmm. And I thought he was really, really quick and really funny. Okay. Now I'm not, there are other comics out there. Maybe I wouldn't invest as much time and effort into, mm -hmm. but for him, I saw where he was going and he needed help and I knew I could help him. You know what I mean? Like if he was trying to build a rocket ship, I would have probably been like, Oh, let's find somebody else. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I could book a show. You know what I mean? I can negotiate a contract. So that was, I don't know. It was easy. That was easy. And that's when comedy was fun. I think that mm -hmm. being a comic right now is the worst fucking job on the planet. You can't talk about shit. Okay. Everybody's too sensitive. If you're not Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock, you can't talk about anything. You can't. And yeah. to, I don't know, I did, you know, movies. I mean, I was watching, um, Oh my God. You remember the movie with the coffee in the airplane and he was talking like jive talk. Oh, airplane. Shit, the movie's airplane. Okay. Soul plane? No. Yeah, okay. Oh, so that it. was the rendition of soul plane was the, okay, my bad. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. So my back. Uh, did you just try to make me look old? No, ma'am. I Wait, thought that was the remix version. Bitch, you're bitch, you're by the, by, by, by the, by, by the, by the minute. Okay. Wow. I so, thought this was Airplane was old. really good. Okay. And airplane. I don't know who was in it, but. It's so inappropriate, okay. which makes it so funny. And there's so many movies like that. Okay. And I don't know, does it ever come back? You know, is everything we watch now gonna have to make us feel good? Or, mm -hmm. you know, we can't talk about this. I don't know. I, I'm not enjoying comedy the way I used to. So I would think being a comic, if you're not Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock, can't talk about this, can't talk about that person. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It don't seem like a fun job to me. 
Yeah, definitely tricky times, right? Yeah. When comedy was that space to kind of push the push, envelope. Definitely. You know? Definitely. Make people forget their problems. Yeah, right. I am going to talk about you. You can't drive, okay? Mm -hmm. I am going to talk about you. You know, mm -hmm. you do eat a lot of fried chicken. I am mm -hmm. going to, you know what I mean? And I'm mm -hmm. not saying just that pandering sort of comedy, but, you know, if it's smart and funny, it's smart and funny, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I told Gary, my ex, you should really lean into the cheating because there are a lot of good stories. Mm -hmm. Just lean into it. It The shit happened. Okay? Cheating? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, and I think now... Maybe he will, but I told him I would lean into it. I would share, because I, I don't give a shit. Okay. When I say it doesn't mean anything to me anymore, it doesn't mean anything. It, okay. My issue was never about the cheating. So it was he other was things. cheating, because he wouldn't say. Well, I think he's certain. leaning, he's being a little more honest about it. Okay. Yeah. How do you feel that he said he only dates black women? Is that just like a personal preference? I don't, I don't, I don't care, care about that either. Okay. I, you know what? I think the order you get, you don't care about a lot of shit. You yeah. got a preference, you got a preference. I just sat up here and said, I like chocolate. And I do like chocolate. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So Same. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I don't, you know, mm -hmm. my daughter would probably not appreciate that comment. But she's oh, more, yeah. um, I, you know, I want everybody. But she's more on the front lines of, you know, fists in the air and all that kind of stuff. So she probably mm -hmm. would not, does not appreciate that comment. Yeah. But. I don't know. I think people, I just want, I'm happy and I want everybody else to be happy. So. Okay. So you are happy. Miss Kenya is I happy. I am happy. And I got a good life. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. I just, I, I, I want to tell you that my podcast is only because of him. He told me you should do a podcast. You would be really good. If he would have never told me that, I never have truly Kenya podcast. Okay. If, and if I had never gotten a divorce and went through all that, I would have never done the podcast, mm -hmm. even though he was telling me I should, because mm -hmm. everything was really poured into, to him. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I would have ever done it. Like I like, a, I'm a behind the scenes kind of person, I think, mm -hmm. but you know, you do what you have to do. And now I love the podcast. I wanted to ask you, um, an another question about interracial dating okay. just in terms of like <clears throat> excuse me I'll set it up so I was watching this video and this lady she yes. was talking about you know a lot of black women um don't find themselves married because and you know I'm like all for this in terms of like you know I want to marry a black man you know okay and um and I understand why a lot of black women want to do that because they feel like culturally there's like differences in other mm -hmm. men that it will be so hard for them to be accustomed to, right? Mm -hmm. And so for you, um, when you first started to, you know, be surrounded by, you know, white men in terms of like in Santa Barbara, them mm -hmm. coming up to you and things like that, and you started dating mm -hmm. men outside of your race, like how was that in terms of, being accustomed to that, you know? So I will say this for my own personal, I didn't realize how much I missed the swag, the vibe of a black guy until um, maybe you just turn it off, you know, cause you're married. So you try not to be paying attention to a lot of that. But once I was unmarried, I don't know, shit turns me on. I don't know, I love it. You know what I mean? So. Um, you know, I, it, 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 they definitely bring a different, um, I think black guys definitely bring a different vibe. Um, I was watching some stand up or maybe reading some stuff um, yeah. about Gary and he mentioned, you know, like he grew up in Ohio mm -hmm. and um, it wasn't really much black people around. And he said he would be watching the TV and he would be like, you know, like, where are these black people at? you know, like he had an affinity for black people early on, but he just didn't really see that reflected mm -hmm. in his community. Um, did, were there any kind of things that you had to kind of, you know, like educate him on in terms of like when it comes to blackness and black culture that, you know, his intentions were in the right space, but maybe mm -hmm. he just wasn't aware of? Cause I think there are a lot of that. You gotta keep mm -hmm. in mind, we were brought up so differently, like just mm -hmm. in terms of the nuclear family was different. So I was very close to all of my relatives and we used to squeeze into my grandmother's house on Sunday mm. and have dinner. Mm -hmm. um, I had a very um, 
I think his mother was loving and probably did the best she could do, but had a very loving and intent attentive mother. You know, so he didn't have a lot of those things. So just out the gate, his experience were different, you know, and I wasn't worried about if he'd be a good father because he, he was a nice guy and I could teach him, you know what I mean? I could teach him how to be loving, you know, maybe not how to be a father, but I could teach him how to love my kids, you know, um, and how to love me, you know what I mean? But I think he, I think obviously like we're not saying the word, the N word, okay? Uh, we are not, you know, you don't say that, you know what I mean? You're doing too much. Like, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes when we go to parties, if it's more black, we just gonna fall back a little bit. You know what I mean? Let the black people do what the black people do. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, uh, you know, maybe things like, like that, um, you know, he, he definitely is like, I'm gonna get in the pool. I don't, I don't care if they in there, the pool or not. <laughs> you know what I mean? So maybe we're not going to do that. You know what I mean? We're we going we gonna to hang out mm -hmm. of the pool, okay? Because mm -hmm. then it's like, your ass is in the pool, and I'm on the side of the pool telling you to get your ass out of the pool, okay? We're not doing that today, okay? He loves the pool. Oh, right? he loves the pool, Didn't okay? He, he said he jumped in after you guys that is were true. together for the first time. Yeah, and that's true. Like, what that's was your true. response to that? You see, like, I was, was like, just, so happy? I, no, I was like, he is fucking crazy. I, it was never, it's like, this is white boy shit. You know what I mean? Like, seriously. But Did you have those moments? Like, oh, white boy a lot of times. Oh, yeah. Like white boy when shit. it came to food, like I think the first thing he made me was um, maybe the first and only thing was some tuna casserole, but oh it had like um, I had never had it before, but it also had like um, you know, white people love to raisins. And lo shit. No, they love to sprinkle a cracker on something. You know, crackers. like so it was Ritz crackers. He sprinkled on the top oh, of wow. something, and you know, like even when it comes to they, their uh, mac and cheese, they like to sprinkle. They like to do a lot of sprinkling with crackers. <laughs> And I was like, okay, what's this? So I acted like I like it, you know, cause I thought it was a nice gesture, mm -hmm. but I mean, he did a lot of like white stuff. You know, he's very punctual, very punctual. That's and good. white people tell you a time, they don't do it like, like if I said, hey, Tina, okay, um, 6.30 good, 6.45. You know, I'm not gonna say like 6.47. I'm not gonna, you know, do any, of that we mm -hmm. we gonna you know we're gonna keep it on the quarter you know what i mean right so i mean yeah he does have a lot of white tendencies mm -hmm. but i ignored him you know mm -hmm. from oakland like who cares wasn't nothing too too no not so. not too crazy like he ain't never like you know called me a, a, a house nigga or nothing like that or you know mm -hmm. like it was it was no role play like he the slave master and i'm a slave no oh, no Lord. okay, okay. No. Right, right, no for all of you that have a fetish it was none of that. Okay. No. So in terms of material, you know, yeah. some of his comedy routines, did you ever find any offense with some of the material that you would hear him say on stage? Yeah, I think there were a couple of times. Um, I think one, uh, one, I can't remember the exact joke, had to do with, um, like, however he put the joke, it was like present tense. Mm -hmm. So like... Oh, I was out, you know, um, or when I slept with this girl, but it was more present tense. It wasn't like past tense. Okay. I had an issue with that. But now we know why. Because the shit was present. Okay. <laughs> That's what we know. All right. That's why it was present tense. And I think it was something like that. And I think, no, I mean, it's one, you know, I don't know, maybe about me wielding a knife or stabbing somebody, but that's the old me. That's not the new. <laughs> you just get with it. No, get with it. Came. The Oakland came out. The Oakland came oh, out. Oh, she's there. Okay, okay. We work real hard to keep her in check. Okay. <laughs> Same. So I feel you. So moving forward, I didn't stab anyone. Oh, although yeah, I, was, I was, I was, I was going to, but God intervened and it didn't happen. Well, was and I was in my twenties. Okay. It was for my first baby daddy. You know, oh, there's a lot of emotion there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm just glad that you made it through that. I know, right? And nobody got hurt. Nobody got hurt. Because nobody's trying to be yes, in white Yes, nobody got jail. hurt. Nobody got hurt. Look at God. <laughs> so, what is Kenya primarily focused on right now? The Truly Kenya podcast mm -hmm. is my baby. Mm -hmm. So, I'm very focused on it. You know, it's a good time. I have a lot of fun. It's like a bubble for me. Mm -hmm. So, like, there are... Um, if I'm by myself, I'm probably having an intimate conversation in my mind with my close friends, although it's a podcast. And um, I feel safe in that bubble, 
So it really allows me to have some good, honest conversations. Mm -hmm. And um, that's important. Um, I do have a dating show I would like to do. And are you going to be? Hosting. Okay, it's not yeah. a show for you. Not a show for me, but okay. I do enjoy talking to people looking for love. Everybody has to be 35 and have a job, okay? Because mm -hmm. don't important. nobody want to deal with nobody that got a job. You can be a bus driver. Bus drivers are welcome, especially if you are attractive and got a good sense of humor. <laughs> and can cook. And can cook. Oh my God. Important. <laughs> yeah, so, but the Truly Kenya podcast mm -hmm. is really, really important to me. Mm -hmm. um, and I may do some other things. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you will. You said you're not into fitness, but I'm like, no, you know, we need to. I, Are you? Miss Kenya, you over there snatch more than I am. I'm Are just you saying, into fitness? You know, I'm trying to. Well, I need to be a little bit more. I was really in college running and all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know. Huh. I think people who act like they enjoy being at the gym and working out all the time and having these restricted diets act like they love life. I think that's a fucking lie. Mm -hmm. Don't nobody love life that much where you are living on a restricted diet. <laughs> and I mean, I do say after Pilates, I do feel a little burst of energy, mm -hmm. but it don't last all day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't think those people are telling the truth. I mean, the gym is, I would rather a personal trainer than the yes. gym because there's so much, like, it just be a lot going on. So can there. I tell you about a personal trainer? I don't like personal trainers because you're the only one they're focused on. Okay. So they'd be trying to correct your every move. That's I don't like cool. that. I like a group where okay. if I don't want to do the full lunch, I do a half lunch. <laughs> and who knows? Who cares? Because right. he's worried about Billy over there that act like she can't even get down to do right. the lunch, right? right? So I like to kind of be in the mix so I don't have to, you know, I don't know. Maybe that says a lot about my personality too, though. No, no, I feel, I feel you. You yeah. don't want to like scrutiny on you. Mm -hmm. I do like Pilates. And so Pilates is like... The, the reformer is like a machine and it's like resistance. I'm probably explaining this all wrong. I've only had eight classes, but I'm doing really well. Um, I think it's more resist, like resistance, like they have springs and stuff. Okay. But I do think, okay, so I was out with a guy and he said my butt, it was shaped like a heart, Aww. which is like cute, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to further find out, mm -hmm. is it that little heart you gave out like in, you know, preschool, like they come in a box, like a bunch of little hearts? Uh -uh. Or was it like a C's candy heart? <laughs> or was it like the mega heart, right? So uh -huh. we know it's not the mega, mm -hmm. but it could be one of the others. Okay. And he said it was the kind of come in a little box. I was like, what the fuck? You like, want the C's? I, don't, I don't want the little box, booty. Okay. I would like a little bigger. So Pilates, and I uh -huh. do think, Mm -hmm. that Pilates has helped this butt. Help lift it up? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah, well, I do. Yeah. All right, that's good. Uh -huh. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So, any last thoughts before we close out of here, Miss Kenya? Oh, thank you for the conversation. No. It was, it was, can I tell you something? The conversation was better than what I thought it was going to be. Oh, well, I'm really and glad. And I'm glad I, I didn't cancel on you. Me too. Yeah, although I was a little late. I was tardy, but I'm, I am sorry about that. That That's was okay. just traffic. You on the colored people time. I know. I was on CP time. It's okay, because we was ready. We was ready here for <laughs> I'm you. I'm diving in, man. I'm telling you. The chocolate guys, the CP time, I'm diving in. <laughs> so, no. You know, watch the Truly oh. Kenya podcast. It is on YouTube. It's on your... Uh, podcast platforms everywhere. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, we are not changing the world, but we do talk. We do have fun. Okay, it That's ain't important. deep. It's just a little escape. Mm -hmm. Well, it's good to see you smiling and you know looking great. I did actually have one last question. Okay, go ahead. Um, advice yeah. for women that you know are going through a divorce or recently divorced. You know, like what. Yeah. Any advice or thoughts that come to mind in terms of, you know? I would say you don't need a million people to tell all your business to. For me, I had two. You know, you may have one. You just need one person to be able to flush out your thoughts. Mm. Um, and, th and that's good enough. Now, d don't, go f go, don't think your drunk friend can do it. She can't, okay? You need somebody who is somewhat solid. Um, I believe in therapy and therapy for me was, um, 
I did not want to carry any baggage into my next relationship. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is I needed to work on, um, I really wanted to try to get that, you know, worked out or try to understand it um, before I took it to my next relationships. Because I've only been in relationships. I'm not one that is like dated a lot. Like I date and I'm in a relationship, you know. So um, there's some things that I, I wanted to work on that way. Mm -hmm. um, even on your worst day, I want you to know you're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. On the worst day. Is somebody doing much worse than you? And sometimes it's hard for us to look past our pain or our financial situation. But I just, it's all going to be a part of your story. And you're going to be okay. You know, so stay in the game because you're going to be okay. <laughs> okay. It's going to be fine. Well, thank you so much for your time, uh, Miss Kenya, and we will definitely be following your progression. So. Okay. Yeah. Yay.